I've now got a very special guest, Mukul Rothki, who's of course also the former Attorney General. Mr. Rothki, thanks for joining us here on ET Now. You've been involved with these proceedings as well. A 4-1 majority in favor of Aadhaar being held constitutionally valid. No doubt that the government will take this as a win. The naysayers, meanwhile, are having a field day that uh, private companies can no longer demand this. I think it's a balanced verdict. Upholding the essentials of Aadhaar, the basic concept for which it was meant, is a victory for the government. It's a victory for the common man. Why? Aadhaar was meant to plug the loopholes of wastage of subsidy or diversion of subsidy amounts into black money, into mm -hmm. black market. Whether it was, uh, you see, ration, whether it was gas, whether it is scholarships. Thousands of crores of this money was going into the wrong hands. The only way to plug this mm. was conceived as, you know, by making an Aadhaar. And as I had argued earlier also, you also require a national identity. Somebody living in JNK, somebody living in Tamil Nadu, somebody living in Assam, don't have uniform identity cards because their languages are different. Right? So somebody gets a a Russian card as a means of identity from Guwahati, which is written, written in Assamese, and he goes to Punjab and he shows it. Who can understand it? Or from Punjab, you go to Kanyakumari. So you required a national identity card. So this card serves as an identity card, say to get it to an airport. Hmm. Forget its other benefits or whatever. It serves as an identity card. But Mr. Rothke, you know, because you brought up black money, I'm going to bring up something which is in the verdict that it you it has been set aside that uh, you don't need to provide Aadhaar anymore for bank accounts, but you need to provide it for income tax returns if you are eligible for it. My question to you is, and this is something that's been argued by the government and the CBDT has been talking about this problem that plagues the system, duplicate bank cards. What's to stop uh, dishonest people? tax evaders, now finding loopholes in this, creating multiple bank accounts with those very duplicate bank cards and escaping the very purpose, one of the big purposes Aadhaar was designed for. Look, as I said, the most fundamental issue was plugging the diversion of subsidies. That is the first thing. Income tax and bank cards is another thing. Now that the court has said that it cannot go to private hands, etc., in terms of banks, which are private bodies, and insurance is now a private business. I mean, you know, you can't find a solution for every problem. Even with Aadhaar being mandatory for subsidies, I'm sure some people will find a way to beat the system. Indian Jugaad. Jugaad, bolo, kuch bhi boli aap. There are all kinds of people who beat all kinds of systems. So merely because there can be some misuse cannot be a ground to criticize Aadhaar. Hmm. I mean, I have always advocated that position that no law is perfect. No, no parliament can ever envisage all kinds of situations which are immediate. It devises the law. You trust people to follow the law. You trust the courts to implement the law. But somewhere, some, something or the other, when people violate it, well, it will go on, you know, it's always a cat and mouse game. Yeah. People, the government will realize how people are doing that. If you plug it, somebody will realize something else. So I don't think that should be a way. But now that uh, private companies can no longer demand Aadhaar, which would also mean banks, it would also mean telecom companies. There are some telecom companies that have even uh, done biometric verification. Is this not going to lead to a lot of confusion? And what happens to that? And now do we need laws and strengthening to ensure that data is never misused? Well, we definitely need a data protection law, whether it was given to banks or insurance companies or even when it is given to the government. And you're soon going to have a data protection law that's in the offing. I don't think there's any doubt yeah. about it. And as far as banks and insurance companies are concerned, as of today, as from now, there will be no KYC based on Aadhaar. People who have given it, their data should be made secure by virtue of these laws. And I'm sure that those who want to probably take it back may be entitled to take it back. I mean, that's one thought I have. But how do you take it back? How do you ensure that you have the only copy of the biometric uh, verification? Well, taking it back, I mean that uh, the, the receiver of the biometric and details should erase it from the system. 
and if you erase it in a system so that it can't be retrieved, maybe that's one way. That's the, the hackers will come in, Mr. Rodki. Before I let you go, you know, the uh, finance minister Arun Jaitley in his last budget speech had also spoken about Aadhaar for Corporate India, for India Inc., saying that this is required. You need to have an Aadhaar-like system uh, to bring about transparency. Would you have any thoughts, however initial they may be, about how this could pan out? I think everything must be uh, done in a, at a proper time. We should not look at everything today. Mm. I think... Your cup is full today. <laughs> Which let us absorb this judgment, let us analyze this judgment, and keep other issues. For okay, so before I let you go, the naysayers and uh, you know you've you've dealt with them. You know that uh, how many there are as well. Could they look at the minority judgment in any kind of a way to get a legal recourse? Just can you inform mm -hmm. us on that because this is a constitutional bench. See, the judgment is four is to one, and in our system of jurisprudence, the dissenting judgment does not have any binding force or any persuasive force. So it's essentially the majority judgment which binds and it's the majority judgment which is the law. And is it possible at all any door has been left open that any further changes in the Aadhaar Act would need judicial scrutiny? Look, changes in a law or bringing in a new law is the prerogative of parliament. You don't require a court's permission to make a law or change a law. But once you do it, somebody can go to court and challenge that law. This is separation of powers. Hmm. I mean, the courts don't ask permission from parliament to give a particular judgment or not, right? Yeah. So similarly, parliament doesn't They won't ban criminal legislatures. No, that's a different thing, but the courts, I mean, parliament doesn't go to court and say it should be passed a law. These are separation of powers. There are different powers in the constitution. I don't think any uh, uh, there's any requirement for parliament or the government to ask a court whether they should make a law. Mr. Rodki, thank you so much for joining us here in ET Now.